On the ground, rapid-fire weapons spit thousands of bullets, pinning the enemy down and causing wholesale destruction. But in the air, they cause even greater carnage. Right on, baby. And it's all thanks to technology that died out a hundred years ago. The Gatling gun. Jet fighters, jet aircraft, found that if you used a normal 50 caliber machine gun or 20 millimeter autocannon with a single barrel, that as the jet fighter made a pass over the ground or at an enemy fighter or bomber, the time that they spent on target was very brief. And so what has happened is the old technology, the multiple barrel Gatling gun, has been reintroduced and reborn as the Vulcan cannon. It might be called the Vulcan, but with this angel of death flying above you, you won't live long and you won't prosper. But how did a hand crank machine gun come out of retirement to kick ass? The answer, electricity. The Vulcan aircraft cannon is a 20 millimeter cannon that is, from an engineering point of view, almost identical to the old Gatling gun. It just goes a lot faster. Modern electrical motors driving the old engineering of the Gatling gun can give an enormously high rate of fire. When the pilot flips off the safety and hits the trigger, the Vulcan cannon judders, screams, and lets loose 100 rounds a second, 6,000 per minute, more barrels, means more bullets. And that, of course, makes it ideal for an aircraft. It might not have much time to get a shot off, and during that time, with a Gatling-type gun, it can deluge the target with fire. Electric-powered Gatling guns made their first appearances on jet fighters in the 1950s. But it was in the 1970s that Dr. Gatling's gun reached its true potential, with the birth of the most terrifying weapon system on the modern battlefield. It was developed by Fairchild with two monstrous jet engines. Originally designated the Thunderbolt II, pilots called it the Warthog. Strong, ugly, brutal, a beast. Though no beauty, this plane's loved by those who serve alongside it for one good reason. The A-10 is literally built around the Avenger cannon. It's little more than a flying Gatling gun. We can see, as we get down to the real business end here, we have seven rotating barrels. It's the same concept, basic concept, as the original Gatling gun. It is extremely lethal. It fires a projectile about this size. You can have depleted uranium tip ordnance. Uh, these are known as armor-piercing incendiaries. This is one hell of a can opener. The uranium-hardened ordnance was built with one thing in mind, annihilating Russian tanks. Since the Second World War, the Soviet Union has churned out the greatest armor in the world. The A-10 was born out of the fear of vast hordes of communist tanks and troops pouring across Central Europe. What we discovered after the Soviet archives opened is that on the top of their list of things they were most concerned about in any kind of attack into Western Europe was the A-10. It was a, a lethal weapon. The A-10 never got the chance to prove itself against Russian tanks, but it did excel in combat operations in both Gulf Wars. This is armor similar to a modern tank. The entry hole is one size, the exit hole is a lot larger. The poor people in between now are probably all dead. The A-10 was designed specifically for the intimate support of ground troops, for going in low, for taking on enemy troops on the ground, able to absorb punishment, and built round this very, very potent weapon system. The truth of the matter is that one or two A-10s can take on a mechanized unit, and as long as there's no 
air support for that mechanized unit, that mechanized unit will cease to exist.